AC44 conveyor dish machine, heating elements, and their component relationships. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the heating elements. We're going to look at an overview from the source of where power comes in to what activates the heating elements. Let's start out with the source coming in to the main power terminal. This is high voltage, 208 to 240 volt, three phase. From the main power terminal, black wires connect the heater circuit breaker. These wires are live and hot at any time main power is turned on, regardless of the master on and off switch. The heater circuit breaker is a 50 amp breaker and designed to protect the conveyor from either overcurrent or over amperage from the heating elements. On the bottom side or discharge side of the circuit breaker, the heating elements are wired in, both wash and rinse. The wash heating element connected with black wires travels through a conduit to the heater control box. Here they connect to the top side of the wash heater relays. In the legacy units, mercury relays was originally used. Because of law changes, if a mercury relay goes bad, it must be replaced with a new circuit breaker. We are grandfathered in that mercury relay relays can be in place until they go bad or have to be replaced. The new units, or replacing units, are replaced with contactors. The contactors are designed that there is a delay relay attached to the bottom. This is to keep contactors from chattering when thermostats are bordering temperature lines. Coming out of the bottom side of the heater circuit breaker would be brown wires. Brown wires will travel through a separate conduit to the heater control box and connect to the top side of the rinse heater relay. Again, in legacy machines, the old style mercury relays can still be in place until they go bad or have to be replaced. The old mercury relays are very reliable and very durable. When these are replaced, they are then replaced with the new contactors. Again, the delay relays attached to keep the contactors from chattering. As you notice, the new ones are come fully equipped and are wire, color coded wired, yellow wires for the rinse, orange for wash. Also coming off the main power terminal, L1 and L2 connects to the step down transformer. Step down transformer steps down high voltage, 208, 240 volts, down to a low voltage or what we call control voltage of 110 volts. This control voltage is now transferred over to the master on off switch. When the master on off switch is turned on, it now supplies control power or low voltage power to the control voltage power terminal. This is the distribution block that controls all the switches within the dish machine. From the top side of the control terminal, a black wire wires into the rinse float switch. A separate black wire wires into the wash float switch. These are so that the switches can operate independently. When in the wash and rinse tanks are water displacement weights or people better know them as floats. Water displacement weights are connected with rods that goes up through the machine to the float switches. They control a lever 
that changes the direction of the micro switch. As the water displacement weights relieve pressure, it releases the lever and allows the micro switch to change positions. When there's no water in the machine, power is diverted to the fill solenoid. This is when the machine knows that it needs water. Power is transferred through a blue wire to the fill solenoid. When the fill solenoid is activated, the machine starts to fill. Both tanks will be filling at the same time, but in this tutorial, Let's focus on one tank at a time. Let's start with the rinse side. As the rinse tank starts to fill, the water displacement weight releases pressure from the lever and allows the micro switch to return to its normal position. This now transfer current going from the blue wire to the fill solenoid to the yellow wire that now goes down to activate the thermostat. When the temperature is not at its set point at the thermostat, the thermostat closes its thermal coupling and transfers current to the rinse heater relay. This activates a magnet within the relay that closes the circuit. It allows the hence rinse heater relay to now transfer power from main power coming in to the heating element itself the heating element now turns on and starts heating up the water. Once the water reaches its set point, the thermostat opens its circuit, disconnecting power to the rinse heater relay that now turns off the rinse heater element. That's how this works. It is actually a very simple process. Now let's take a look at the wash tank. As the wash tank starts filling, again the water displacement weight releases the pressure from the lever located within the switch, float switch. Power is then transferred from the blue wire to an orange wire that goes down to the wash thermostat. If water temperature is not achieved within the wash tank as desired, it now sends current to the wash heater relay. At the wash heater relay, it energizes a magnet that closes the circuit, allows main power to flow through the relay to the heating element. Heating element now turns on to start heating up the water. When the water temperature has been achieved, thermostat opens the circuit, stops current flowing to the heater relay, it turns off the heating element. These are the only components related to the heating element in a conveyor dish machine. Now let's take a look at the visual aspect of how this actually works on the dish machine. First we turn on the master switch. When you turn on the master switch and there's no water in the tank, the float switches automatically send power to the fill solenoid that actually starts filling up the tanks. As the tanks are filling up, it moves the water displacement weight that relieves the pressure off the lever located in the float switch box. On the rinse side we're looking at, you can see how the lever relieves pressure off the micro switch, now sending power to the yellow wire. The yellow wire then transfers down to the rinse thermostat. 
to raise the temperature, turn counterclockwise. Power comes into one side of the thermostat. The other side then goes to the heater relay. On the wash side, as the tank is filling up, the water displacement weight relieves the pressure off the lever and allows the switch to change positions. It now transfers power to the orange wire that will go down to the wash thermostat. Same type of thermostat, turning counterclockwise will increase the temperature. Power comes into one side of the thermostat from the micro switch. The second wire then travels to the heater control box and connects to the heater relay. When this receives power, energizes a magnet that now closes the circuit so that the heating element comes on. Once temperature has been achieved, the indicator light goes off and lets you know that the heating element has been turned off. This has been an overview of the AC44 conveyor dish machine, heating elements, and their component relationships. To learn more about the AC44 conveyor dish machine heating elements by talking to your managers, regional manager, vice president, or contact the training center for more information.